Good Tuesday, everyone, and welcome to this edition of Conversations Daily News. I'm your host, Cyrus Webb. Glad you all could join us once again. We, of course, have your news headlines coming up on this Tuesday. We have the truth of the day with Mary Ellen Zaganovich, and in today's entertainment spotlight, you're being part of my conversation with entrepreneur Jonathan Hooker. Enjoy today's broadcast. For Conversations Daily News, I'm Cyrus Webb with your Tuesday headlines. In national news, CDC director has feeling of impending doom amid new spike. The head of the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention made an impassioned plea to Americans on Monday not to let their guard down in the fight against COVID-19, warning of a potential fourth wave of the virus and saying she has a reoccurring feeling of impending doom. Speaking during a virtual White House briefing, Dr. Rochelle Walensky grew emotional as she reflected on her experience treating COVID-19 patients who are alone at the end of their lives. We have so much to look forward to. So much promise and potential of where we are and so much reason for hope, she said. But right now, I'm scared. I'm going to lose the script and I'm going to reflect on the recurring feeling I have of impending doom, she said. Cases of the virus are up about 10% over the past week from the previous week to about 60,000 cases per day with both hospitalizations and deaths ticking up as well, Walensky said. I have to share the truth, and I have to hope and trust you will listen, she added. Walensky and Dr. Anthony Fauci, the nation's top infectious disease expert, appealed to elected officials, community leaders, and everyday Americans to maintain social distancing measures and mask wearing. We are doing things prematurely, Fauci said, referring to moves to ease up on restrictions. Walensky appealed to Americans, just please hold on a little while longer. She added, we are not powerless. We can change this trajectory of the pandemic. Walensky pointed to an uptick in travel and loosening virus restrictions for the increase in cases. People want to be done with this. I too want to be done with this, she said. We've seen surges after every single holiday, she reiterated. Please limit travel to essential travel for the time being. In a related story, Biden and CDC director warn of virus rebound if nation lets up. Too many Americans are declaring victory early. President Joe Biden and the top health officials said on Monday, appealing for mask requirements and other restrictions to be maintained or restored to stave off a fourth surge of COVID-19. In more national news, jurors shown video at ex-officer's trial in Floyd's death. The video of George Floyd gasping for breath was essentially Exhibit A as a former Minneapolis police officer who pressed his knee on the man's neck went on trial Monday on charges of murder and manslaughter. The prosecutor showed the jurors the footage at the earliest opportunity during opening statements after telling them that the number to remember was 9 minutes 29 seconds, the amount of time Officer Derek Chauvin had Floyd pinned to the pavement last May. The officer did not let up even after a handcuffed Floyd said 27 times that he couldn't breathe and went limp. The prosecutor said in the case that triggered worldwide protests, scattered violence, and national soul-searching over racial justice. He put his knees upon his neck and his back, grinding and crushing him, until the very breath, no ladies and gentlemen, until the very life was squeezed out of him, the prosecutor said. Chauvin's attorney countered by arguing Derek Chauvin did exactly what he had been trained to do over his 19-year career. The medical examiner's autopsy noted fentanyl and methamphetamine in Floyd's system, but listed his cause of death as cardiac arrest, complicating law enforcement's subdual, restraint, and neck compression. Chauvin, 45, is charged with unintentional second-degree murder, third-degree murder, and manslaughter. The most serious charge, the second-degree murder count, carries up to 40 years in prison. The case is the first trial ever televised in Minnesota. In more national news, police say no idea why a man shot five people before killing self. Investigators have no idea why a Maryland man fatally shot his parents at their home and gunned down two other people at a convenience store before setting fire to his apartment and killing himself, a police official said on Monday. A gun that Joshua Green, 27, used in Sunday's deadly shooting spree was registered to him and had been legally purchased in 2020, according to the Baltimore County Police. And filing entertainment news, beloved children's book author Beverly Cleary dies at age 104. Beverly Cleary, the celebrated children's author, whose memories of her Oregon childhood were shared with millions through the likes of Ramona and Beezus Quimby and Henry Higgins, has died. 
Cleary's publisher HarperCollins announced on Friday that the author died Thursday in Carmel Valley, California, where she had lived since the 1960s. No cause of death was given. Trained as a librarian, Cleary didn't start the writing of books until her early 30s when she wrote Henry Huggins, published in 1950. Children worldwide came to love the characters that she created. Cleary wasn't writing recently because she said she felt it's important for writers to know when to quit. Cyrus Webb, Conversations Daily News. It's now time for the Truth of the Day with Mary Ellen Togedovich. Mary Ellen, it's all yours. Hi, this is Mary Ellen with your Truth of the Day. Allow the rhythm of life to assist you to dance through life's pressures. When you feel stressed and hassled, you can relieve the pressure by focusing on your core and taking a deep cleansing breath. This will bring you back to the now moment allowing the rhythm of life to begin to flow once more. Do not attempt to control the universe or God. You cannot. You must relax into the rhythm of life. Trust in God's divinely orchestrated plan. All will fall into place, turning out exactly right. Release any pressure on yourself by knowing there is always enough time to do exactly everything that needs to be done. Today, choose to focus on the rhythm of life to assist you to dance your way through life's pressures. And remember, enjoy the day. Jonathan Hooker is featured in today's Entertainment Spotlight right here on Conversational Daily News. For Conversational Daily News, I'm Cyrus Webb with the Entertainment Spotlight. Entrepreneur Jonathan Hooker joined me on Conversations Live, the radio show, to talk about what it's been like for him to do what he loves in business and to make a difference along the way. Here's a bit of our conversation. First of all, I want to talk about the importance of making a difference. I think a lot of times people think you have to be an elected official or or some famous person to do it. What has it been like for you in the community to be able to make a difference in the lives of those around you? It's been great. Uh, Like you said, a lot of people think that you got to be this rich person or you got to wait on elected officials or somebody with money to help to make a difference when you really don't. But um, it's been, to me, I like, I love seeing smile people's faces and helping my community as we go along. Have you always known, Mr. Hooker, that you could make a difference? Have you? Is that something that you always knew growing up? No, nah, not really. Uh, I never really thought myself doing this when I was growing up. You know, it wasn't even in my mind. Mm-hmm. But uh, like I went to, when I got out of high school, I got in the military. I did six years in the military. I got out. I moved away to Tennessee for a while and I came back. And me and my, um, for the, for the giving back part, me and my partner, I got my, my cousin, I Mac my office. Me and him actually do this call of birth for the community. That's how we do our give back. Uh, me and him, we formed that group four and a half years ago. It's me and him and we've been giving back ever since. And I think, again, that is, is one of the big things that people, you know, have been able to see. How did you decide what type of business you wanted to have? Really? Um, it just came out of nowhere. Uh, it started when I was my football team. Uh, I used football team from ages 5 through 12. Mm-hmm. We were doing car washes at this big called Delta Wine and Spirits owned by Brock Wallace. And he had to do car washes just for free. <clears throat> and I guess he saw what a good guy I was and I was trying to have something. And he had this food trailer. And one day I was just at my house, he called. He was like, you I got a business opportunity for that. I said, okay. He said, well, how would you like to buy this food trailer from me? Cyrus Webb, Conversations Daily News. We thank you all for tuning in to this edition of Conversations Daily News. we we'll you guys on tomorrow with more news, Truth of the Day with Mary Ellen Zaganovich, and of course your entertainment spotlight. Until then, I'm your host Cyrus Webb saying, as always, enjoy your day, enjoy your life, enjoy your world. Thank you all for choosing Conversations Daily News today. Let's make it a great one.